there's not really much to go off of. Um, I'm in a statistical quandary. Um, a good many stats point to us going down. A good many stats now point to us going up. And they're pretty much dead even. Uh, the only thing that I have to look at are outside pairs for the um, positive expectancy. So, for example, we have uh, Ethereum, which I'm focused on right now, and the geometry of this, which kind of points at going to the 264 area up here. Um, of course, I can't predict how high it's going to go or before it drops, but at some point I'm going to be looking for it to pull back all the way back down to under 190. Uh, but it has good uh, geometry, so I'm not going to go over and look to do anything with it unless it gets really overbought into this range up here. Now, on a long-term basis, uh, I, I believe Ethereum to be undervalued, so I'm not one who's um, enthusiastic about shorting it. And I mean undervalued in a way where it should go to numbers all the way in the 400 range and maybe even up to 600 on a comparative basis where um, Bitcoin is involved. So Ethereum is not one of the coins that I really want to go over and use as a trading vehicle versus, say, something like Bitcoin or BNB. Um, it's just not logical uh, because there are just too many anomalies in its pricing um, versus Bitcoin and so forth. But that remains to be seen what it decides to do. And uh, I, I would give it more of a bullish future, to be honest with you. I can see it going to the 400 range and so forth and maybe even higher than that. I mean it did have an explosion all the way up to the this 1400 level uh, before it dropped all the way back down to under 100. On a percentage basis it's a much greater uh, degree than Bitcoin did. So it can do some crazy things. But this is not one that I'm enthusiastic about shorting. Uh, it's just uh, the the numbers are. It's dangerous to even uh, go that route simply because it's never really cleared any numbers like Bitcoin did on a percentage basis. So I would give Ethereum a greater upside capability, and, and it's kind of showing that right now with taking the lead. If we look at it. Um, on the shorter term range with what we are seeing right here. Uh, so it's upward movement. I, I would give it a higher probability of breaking out and, and getting enthusiasm to the upside versus Bitcoin. And with Bitcoin, as you know, I, I went over and had this issue with it and so forth about buying it, you know, uh, geometry wise, you know, I can go look at the patterns and so forth. It is not great as a buy, but at the same time, if the rest of the market is tilted to the upside, then I'm going to follow that. So I take 10% long, it's not that big of a deal, and I'm really focused on this right here, and see if we get that breakout upwards, and then the pullback all the way back down to here to fill that. And then we'll have some better trading opportunities in the future. Um, Outside of that, another one that I was asked about repetitively because it's coming close to my um, target was silver. I had a few people that are long silver with me, and it's a it's a great trade. But this is the J.P. Morgan manipulation trade. <laughs> I want to make this very very clear to you. Um, if you're a holder of this, um, this is where you would look as a trade. Okay, I want to hold this for much longer though. Uh, this in gold is something I'm, I'm holding for the inflationary events for years to come. And I'm looking at three years or more. And the reason why is very simple. And it's because of uh, the printing of money, the M1 money supply expanding the way it is, and us just put it on the credit card type of thinking. Um, it is going to be inflationary at some point. And, you know, the stock market can go up right now because Trump wants to get reelected. That's fine. So what he's doing is he's going around pumping money into ETFs and bond-backed securities, which is basically 
the government is in the stock market, which has never been done before. Um, they, the, the Federal Reserve is buying uh, to prop up the market. I mean, it's just like a, a giveaway. And the smart money is not dumb. They're going to go over and take advantage of all of this, and they're going to do benefit mostly from it. But the unfortunate thing is that the taxpayers, and this is what I call the double fuck, and I'll have an article in the future you guys could read, and you'll understand why I call it double fuck, because the taxpayers are going to get double fucked. They're going to get fucked by having their pensions and their, um, you know, their uh, money into the stock market. And also the government is going to be buying with the taxpayers' money into the stock market. So it is going to be a double fuck. And um, when it unwinds and the smart money is out, uh, it, it's going to be pretty ugly. Um, but anyway, that you know will probably happen after the election. We've got months, so they're going to keep things relatively stable and probably positive to the upside. Um, but that inflation and watch gold and silver, if their prices increase, that, that's indicative. The smart money is moving into there. I can tell you that because I'm hedging with it. And I told you this already ahead of time, months ago, um, that this was likely to occur. Even with all that craziness with Bitcoin going down and whatnot, you know, uh, I wasn't long for no reason. And, you know, I, 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 I don't have to tell you. You've seen what happened in the price. Um, but it's going to be an interesting time. Now, also, one other one I want to focus on is Tesla. Tesla is coming right up, to, coming close to my 900, where I'll be fully hedged both ways. So I'm going to be one to one. Right now, I'm 80% long, I mean, 80% short and 100% long. So for every one share I have um, long, I have 0 0.80 short. So when it gets up to here, I will have one-to-one, -one, which will make me a net neutral position. Now, how do I go over and deal with that in the future? So let's say um, I have my positions and so forth, right? Now, what do I do when it gets to, let's say, 1,000 or 1,100 or 1,200? From there, I will slowly go over and set up little grids. And what they'll do is, let's say at... Um, 1,000, I sell 5%, right? And then I'm naked. I'll be a naked short of 5% of my original holdings. Now, if it pulls back to 900, then I'll close that and be back to 1 to 1. Uh, what if it goes back up to 1,100 or 1,200? I, I start to do slow parts of it, like 5% here, 5% there. It pulls back. I pull back that 5% and I profit off of that. And it's kind of like um, a grid, but it's not nothing very interesting. It, it's done very small amounts over time. Kind of like if you ever seen my, my Bitcoin trades, it's the same thing, same ideology. Um, but I would have negative exposure. And it's a hedge. You know, um, I am keeping a lot of things in cash right now. I'm taking profits because I don't believe in this move. I, I know it's artificially manipulated and um, at some point people are going to get a clue as to this and I, I don't know when. That's the only thing. I can't predict the future. Um, but when they do get a clue and they see that the earnings are way down and um, you know the valuations have to be calculated by these uh, companies correctly even if uh, you know they they would like to have a rosy picture. A rosy picture is not going to do the trick. Um, there's a lot of negativity built into this market that's not showing itself, and it's because of political reasons. You know, Trump has got the Fed by the balls, and they're telling him to push everything up. And okay, so that's the picture there. But that's what I'm doing with here. As soon as it hits that 900, I'll be one to one and have a net neutral position, and then from there I'll decide to start selling five percent here. And if it drops back down, buy it back, and so on and so forth, um, until we ultimately get all the way back down to the 600 range, which right now, where everything's so positive, nobody's going to expect that, right? Why would it do something like that? Um, we're just going to go straight up forever, because economics are so good right now, right? The economy is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, let's just forget about the fact that 
uh, most restaurants and businesses and all the bankruptcies and uh, let's ignore all that. That's we don't care about that. <laughs> so anyway, all the the fake pricing and the artificial inflation, you know, uh, it, where they expand everything, it, it's going to have a, a negative effect and unwind to the downside at some point. And gold and silver is a, a good example of, um, you know, that that telling the market they need a hedge um, uh, against this occurring. And it's going to get played out that way because, and you know, people with big money, they can see it. It's going to be a, a giant fuck fest is all I can say. And it's going to probably be ugly. Um, and it's going to have ramifications for the general public. Um, you know, the poor get poorer and the, the rich get richer is the only way to, I hate to, to use that analogy, but that's pretty much what it is. And that's basically it. And as we can see also oil, it's above that 34 range right here. End of story. Made sense. So, you know, uh, outside of all its craziness and, and everything that's done, it's settled right in this area. Now, where does it go from here? It could go all the way back up to the 40s, but it's likely going to pull all the way back down to the 28 and under 30 again. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five, and it makes pretty good sense for that. Uh, but other than that, um, what I'm watching for right now is for to see if we get up to here. Uh, we have a pattern that puts it all the way back down to under 17, so I'll probably be shorting above 19 here, uh, the 1890s and so forth. And let's hedge against my, my longs. I'll start hedging a small amount. I, I'm really very bullish on silver and, and gold. Um, I, I, they're the, the best hedge that I have um, going against what I believe is going to be a very inflationary environment in the future. And that's very good for um, you know gold and silver, and, and it's very good for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because they are the digital gold and silver, I guess you can say, you know, uh, Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. So we'll see, but that's my uh, current outlook. And uh, if we get up to 10,700 or even up to 11,500, fantastic. Uh, if we can get that blowout, we already seen Ethereum. It's made its move. And if it can get up to the 260s, fantastic. That's what I kind of look for it to do. And then from there, we'll see. Uh, other than that, again, like I said, this is statistically, it's kind of in that, you know, meh category Bitcoin is. But hey, Ethereum's taken off, so now this could play catch up. Uh, that's going to be the most likely scenario that I could see. Even if it's not statistically prominent, I think this is what's likely to occur. And we were positioned that way for it too, and then for the drop all the way back here. And then we'll go from there. Other than that, you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.